So you wanna know what I did not wear last year? I bet the answers will shock you. Hey Fragrance Family, I'm Dave with the Fragrance Bros. Of course, your best source for everything fragrance related. Today I'm doing a video on all the fragrances I did not wear last year, or maybe wore once or twice. So I have a big collection, I would say, uh, bigger than the average Joe out there. If you wanna see my full collection, I have a link up here, you can go and watch that. It's most of what I have. Uh, I've changed a couple of things since that video, but that's really the core of my collection still. So because I have so many fragrances, there are some days where I just don't wear uh, the fragrances that I wore from last year. And sometimes that will change year to year. Sometimes I'll just fall out of love with the fragrance and then the next year I'll fall back in love with the fragrance, as you'll see with some of these. There are a lot here. <laughs> and this really surprised me. I didn't think there were this many here, but looking at my collection and looking at how many I had to take out, uh, there's a lot more here than I thought. All right, so let's go to a few that I know uh, that I did not wear that much, and these will be really quick. Uh, the first one is L'Odyssey Pour Homme. Now, I really do like this one. Uh, I have a review of this if you want to go watch it. Um, I like this. What's funny is my son wears this a lot. This is his favorite out of the ones that I have. <laughs> so if he ever wears a fragrance, he always asks to wear this one. Really good citrusy fragrance with some florals notes in there. It reminds me of kind of um, honey almost, like a, like a, a very fresh wild honey. I uh, really, really like it, but just never wore it. I have other fragrances out there that are citrusy that I just think are better, like with Atelier Cologne, for instance. I wear those just a lot more. Mont Blanc Individual, as you can see, this is almost full. <laughs> uh, and it, this is also a very good fragrance. I have a full review of this as well. It smells very similar to Original Santal, or Original Santal smells very similar to this and very inexpensive in the $30 range. Still very good fragrance. I just like Original Santal more. Versace Man Eau Fraiche, uh, one of the first fragrances I bought right as I was getting into uh, YouTube world. And uh, I really like this one. Again, very great fresh scent, especially for a designer that is very inexpensive. This is a great one. It has star fruit and some uh, really nice herbal notes in there. My wife really likes this, but I just don't wear it. I think there are other ones out there in this realm with the herbal uh, citrusy quality that I just reach for more. Speaking of Versace Man Eau Fraiche, this is one that always reminds me of Versace Man Eau Fraiche, and that is Reeve d'Ambre by Tom Ford. This is actually the travel sprayer, the old travel sprayer. They updated those, and it's excellent. It is excellent. Very, very juicy, watery citrus uh, fragrance with some herbal qualities in there. Did not wear it because I was wearing more <laughs> Atelier Cologne this year. And also my Eccentric Molecules 04 has some kind of the similar qualities of this and Eau Fraiche, and I wore that just a heck of a lot more. All right, so here's one that makes me sad, and this one is uh, Poivre Samarcand by the Hermesence Collection from Hermes. This one was actually given to me by Carlos, Brooklyn fragrance, fragrance lover, so uh, he's such a great guy, and I always appreciate that. Oh man, I love it. Very, very woodsy, peppery, spicy scent with caraway in it. The problem is it comes off a little like B.O. sometimes. I don't think that, but I'm always afraid that other people will think that. <laughs> so because of that, it's a fragrance that I wear only sparingly, and uh, I just didn't really wear it a lot, but uh, I'm gonna try to pull it out this year because I just love it that much. So B.O. be darned. Another from Hermes, this one is Un Jardin en Méditerrané, and by, from their, their Jardin collection. This one was a gift from a subscriber, and cannot thank him enough. It's just, it was just so kind. I always am overwhelmed by the generosity of people, especially subscribers and friends in the community. Uh, it's, it's just wonderful. So fig and pistachio type of scent, very juicy and floral and uh, fruity and a great scent. But every time I think of this, I always think of um, uh, Mojave Ghost from Byredo and how much I love it even more as a similar type of scent. So I always reach for that one more. Everyone knows I'm an Imaginary Authors fanboy, but there are two that I did not wear last year. That one was uh, Slow Explosions. And this one probably isn't a, a much of a surprise because I did a review of it and I do like it, though it's just not my thing. Of course, I'm not a huge rose fan, so right out of the gate, this is a rose fragrance with apple and saffron and a kind of a leathery quality in there. 
It's a great scent, just not something I wear a lot. I only wore it when I was reviewing it at the time, and then I just haven't worn it since. Another from Imaginary Authors that I do really love and have another full review of is A City on Fire. And A City on Fire, very smoky and um, almost thick and resinous. And then as it dries down, it gets into this very dark berry, uh, musky quality that's amazing. But the problem that I've always had with this is it's good for certain occasions and also really good for the cold weather. Sometimes we don't get really, really cold weather enough to really wear it and I just didn't wear it. So unfortunately, this is one that I'm going to return to again soon. So hopefully I'll get to break it out in 2018. Next is Ombre Russe from Parfums d'Empier. This isn't the official bottle. This is actually a decant. Uh, me and my friend Jer, we split a bottle of this. And this one is fantastic. And I have worn this this year, uh, came back to it. Last year I didn't wear it, just kind of uh, fell off my radar for, for you know over a year, I guess. And then this year, fell back in love with it again. It's a great amber scent that is supposed to be reminiscent of Russia, the Russian Empire and it has apparently vodka. And there's also a whole bunch of other notes that I get out of here. You can go to the full review and get my full thoughts on it. But it's a wonderful amber, probably one of my favorite ambers. Uh, so definitely uh, good. Didn't wear it a lot last year, but this year I definitely am. Next is another from the Hermescence collection from Hermes. It's a piece marine. And this one, very, very good. A very fresh, uh, salty, um, spicy scent. It also has cumin and orange in there. It's really different, uh, but I really, really enjoy this. Uh, some people say it's, it's like it's like drinking a scotch on a sailboat or something. I think that's really interesting. This smells very similar to Cartier Declaration, um, if you smelled that one. I think I like Cartier Declaration just a little bit more though. Have a little bit left, so I might, I might finish it off this year and that might be it. Okay, now we're getting into the surprise territory because some of these are definitely rock stars that I did not wear. So let's go with the first one here. This is in my dirty bottle here. <laughs> and of course, this is Amen by Thierry Maglaire. Really great chocolate patchouli uh, coffee scent, really wonderful. This flask is like magnets for dirt and gunk and grime, as you can see. Uh, I can never keep it just perfectly clean. Anyway, it's a great scent. I just, for whatever reason, I reached for other scents more. Lately, I've been liking Intoxicated by from by Killian a lot more, so I still haven't worn it this year. So anyway, but yeah, amen. Another from Theory of Maglaire, Amen Taste of Fragrance. Really loved this scent when it came out. Uh, since then, I just haven't worn it as much as um, I used to. Yeah, really great spicy scent. They take chili pepper and kind of add it on to the Amen formula, and it works really well. There are just other spicy scents that grip me more around this time, so haven't worn it probably for like two or three years. Next is Pure Wood by Thierry Maglaire. Again, another one that I love. I have a full review of this and I gave it glowing remarks and I really do enjoy this a lot. It's a great woody scent, especially for the money now, but it's one of those scents that I find it a little harder to wear because in the fall, which is probably the best time to wear this, it's not something that I want to smell like. But in the spring, which I think it might be able to work for, I don't think it works as well. So it's just kind of in a catch-22, I think, in, in my opinion. So yeah, pure wood. Here's a surprise, pure Havan. <laughs> now I love pure Havan, and in previous years, I've rocked the heck out of it. But this last year, I just didn't. And I think it's because I wore Herod some more, and I wore other scents that were in, in a similar vein to this. But uh, yeah, I just kind of didn't want to smell as sweet as Pure Havan is. Pure Havan is amazing, but the sweetness sometimes gets to me. And uh, this year is one of those years where I just didn't want to smell that sweet. Another rock star here, Dior Ohm Intense. Now, I really like this one. This was actually a gift from Jer, my friend, of course, and compadre on the channel. <laughs> Fantastic iris scent, it's really phenomenal with some ambrette and some musky notes in there. But I always find that whenever I want to smell like iris, I either reach for Dior Homme or Bois d'Argent more. So whenever I think about that, those type of scents, it usually just gets kicked off the list. And um, it's a shame because this is a very, very good scent, but there are just aspects that I don't like about it, like the dry down of this. It's not my favorite, and especially compared to Dior Homme 
and Bois d'Argent, which I think are complete masterpieces. Um, this one just doesn't compare, I guess. Now, to some really jaw-dropping ones here. Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford. <laughs> Another one that is phenomenal. Have a full review that's amazing. Um, really enjoy this one as a leather scent. But, as a leather scent, um, I didn't wear this one just because I have other leather scents that are better. Um, I had a decant of Ombre Leather 13 that I liked a lot more. Sometimes this is too strong for what I need. So, Tuscan Leather didn't get used. Now, can you believe I didn't wear Tom Ford Tobacco Vani. <laughs> Tom Ford Tobacco Vani! And you can see how much I have used. Um, this is a decant that's a few years old here. Amazing, amazing vanilla tobacco scent, of course, with a lot of cinnamon and fruity and boozy notes in there. Um, again, one of those scents that I think has only certain applications for me. Has to be very cold, has to be in a certain type of kind of holiday weather. That's it. I think for me, I know a lot of people differ in that, but to me, it has much more of a holiday type of aspect here. And also too, it's super, super strong. I don't always want to smell this strong all the time. And it's another one of those scents that because it's so expensive, I'm a little bit gun shy on wearing all the time. Maybe some of you are out there like, that are like that too. Some of my more expensive ones don't get used as much. And this is definitely one of them. So tobacco vanille. And the last one on my list here is, <laughs> I can't even believe this. Aventus by Creed. <laughs> of course, this is another decant here that I got a couple of years ago. I have a full bottle as well. Um, I love Aventus and I do wear it. This last year, I just didn't wear it. Uh, as I said, I, I was wearing a lot more newer uh, scents that I got that were in the citrusy realm. And because of that, um, Aventus just never got used. Also too, whenever I'm thinking about Creed in the warmer weather, this always gets kind of second fiddle to uh, Green Irish Tweed for me. And whenever I think about the two, I always go for Green Irish Tweed. So, so because of that, it's become a little bit more rare for me to wear Aventus, even though I love it. And I think it's a masterful scent. Um, it just is not one that I wear as much, at least last year. But uh, who knows what this year will bring. So those are all my scents that I did not wear last year. I know many of those probably shocked you, <laughs> but let me know what you think. What are some fragrances that you did not wear last year? Do you have some? Let me know down in the comments that maybe you love, maybe you have that you will never part with, but you just didn't get to wear last year. And of course, I'm gonna say this, none of these are for sale. Uh, these are definitely ones that I want to keep forever. These are kind of uh, the legacy fragrances that will always be in my collection. Maybe I didn't wear them last year, but maybe I'll wear them this year and uh, give them a chance. But I really, really love these. Can, cannot recommend these more. These are all fantastic. So that's all I have. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on the way out. I'll love you for it. I'll see you next time. I'm Dave with the Fragrance Bros. Bye. Thanks everyone for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to check out my other channel, Beast May Reviews, where me and a friend review high quality products for men. You might like it. Go check it out.